Hey, what's up? Caleb Basie here with another video tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about uh, a easy and effective way to create prop uh, and, uh, you know, helicopter blur for your animations that uh, use that. Here's kind of what you can expect it to look like. Just a little animation I put together with uh, some motion track footage in the view. Pretty nice blurring going on. All right, uh, now you'll need to download two things for this. Well, one thing actually, but uh, if you want a helicopter at uh, turbosquid.com, if you type in helicopter or Apache and then sort by lowest prices first, you'll find this one. Uh, it's uh, to get it into Cinema 40, you just open the, the uh, 3ds Max file and uh, yeah. But uh, you'll also want to look for the Roto Blur kit right here, which is what we'll be using to make our Roto Blur. It's just uh, an opacity faded file that kind of has the blades offset, so when you spin it around, it makes it look like fake or real motion blur, but you don't have to render the motion blur, so. That's what's so great about it. Okay, so uh, the first thing, well, as you can see here, this is uh, you know just your basic helicopter. Uh, what I did is I kind of rearranged the hierarchy of things around just to get like all the uh, propellers and stuff up to the top. But uh, what you're gonna want to do is open that roto blur uh, thing. Uh, the, the file, the uh, Cinema 4D file. And as you can see here, it's just a black disk. And it's because there's a JPEG uh, on it as it's like default. So you're going to need to get that JPEG off there and get it to the uh, PNG um, texture files that came with it. So you're going to load the uh, quad rotor PNG for this file or this project. Just press yes. As you can see it needs the alpha channel the alpha channel now. So you just basically do the same thing. You go there and load it up. What you can do to save a little time in the future is actually, you know, make that go into the rotor file and sort of mess with that so you don't have to keep doing this on every project. So then you're going to want to uh, you see those four things right there? Those actually spin, so you're not just adding the spin to the rotors here, you're going to be adding it to those, but you're going to want to uh, parent the rotors, uh, that, that roto blur thing, the, the, the disk, to that. And then you're going to go up uh, and release 13, I think, yeah, in mesh, there's the parent to, or, uh, change the axis center to the parent so you can get it centered up there I think it's in like structure or selection in like R12 but then after you get it there you kinda put it in the middle of the rotors that are already there and then you scale it to match the size and the uh, you know the width of the rotors and stretch it out here on the other axis all right, that's looking pretty good. Now you can go ahead and uh, actually hide the rotor blades, and you can kind of see w what it roughly looks like right here. It looks like the blades are kind of in motion. So, um, yeah, uh, just keep in mind that you're not going to be doing this for like animating it from slow to fast it's just going to be like the constant motion we're doing here uh, so we're just going to do the same thing for back here there's a little center rod in the rear propeller that we're going to use as our parent uh, item so go ahead and create a duplicate copy of that roto blur disk and uh, go ahead and rename it Then you're going to parent that to that uh, little rod right there, so 
it'll be centered up and yeah it just goes in just like that and you have to rescale it down again just go ahead and rescale it and as you can see here the uh, rear rotor doesn't match up to the one that's provided so keep that in mind if you, uh, if you did want to go from like a stop to where the rotors are full speed you'd have to uh, sort of like slowly animate the real blades in the motion then sort of like I guess opacity fade to the blur disk so you don't have to uh, yeah just uh, if you can create custom rotors in here I, I haven't done that yet but just FYI uh, now notice that I'm going to change the uh, back blades to have no collar uh, so just create a duplicate texture of the roto disk uh, rename it rear or whatever and then go to the collar thing and uncheck it then go and delete the texture on the back blades and then uh, oops deleted the whole thing there just delete the texture and then go ahead and add that new texture we made and you can see there that, that it doesn't have the uh, yellow banding on it so that's good now we can just go ahead and um, go ahead and shy off those back blades and that's uh, you know we have our two rotors on now we're going to be adding some motion and we're going to be doing this very easily you don't have to animate it with the keyframes down here you just use a tag uh, you go to the tags uh, for well select your rotors first go to tags uh, Cinema 4D tags and then a tag called vibrate and then what's your we're just uh, bear in mind here that we'll be applying it to the uh, yeah the, the the whole thing here so just move that vibrate tag up and then what you're going to do is you want to go down and check uh, regular pulse uncheck relative change uh, check uh, enable rotation, change amplitude to 350 and the frequency to 1.5 if you're using 24 frames per second. If you're using 30 frames per second, use 2 as the frequency that's per second. Uh, it'll just look better that way. So once you do that, go ahead and copy uh, that tag and move it to just the roto disc on the back, uh, on the rear. Don't add it to like any of the little uh, uh, cylinders or whatever because that'll just mess things up. And you can see the uh, blades are spinning and everything's looking good. Uh, now if you're adding this to live action footage you're going to want to put in a compositing tag or just any kind of I guess background. <laughs> but um, what you want to do is add a compositing tag to so just go to tags, Cinema 4D tags, compositing tag. Then uh, you don't want the ambient occlusion to show up. So I'll show you why. That's why you don't want these um, big dark lines on the edge of your blades. That just looks terrible. So uncheck the scene, uh, scene by scene AO ambient occlusion. Then I have uh, another thing here that shows my settings I did for this project. I unchecked reflection, added a exclusion for the sky down here. Then right next to it, there's a little uh, box that I made gray, unlike the others that are black, because I kept getting like a white thing that for on my roto disc I think that had something to do with like the global illumination coming from the sky uh, oh yeah also check uh, composite background uh, not, I mean you don't necessarily have to check that but that just worked out for me in this scene because I think I, like the blade collars were like not showing up and I think after I checked that that worked out but uh, you know kind of experiment here and just copy that compositing tag over. Make everything like the way I had it there. Add the exclusion to the sky and whatnot. 
yeah and and you're good to go at this point you know you just animate it as far as flying goes but uh yeah thanks for checking out my video if you liked it please subscribe and like it and check out my other videos i uh, made another tutorial yesterday for buju 2d tracking with after effects uh, check it out my name's caleb basie thanks for watching